Are you ready to level up your Android Google Maps platform apps? I'm Dale, a developer, experience, and relations engineer on the Google Maps platform. I'm here to introduce you to some of the principles behind modern Android app architecture and how to apply these best practices to make your Geo apps robust, scalable, and maintainable masterpieces. Spaghetti makes for a great dinner, but is a terrible way to organize your code. No one starts out wanting to write spaghetti code, but without a good architecture, almost all code ends up being a hopelessly tangled pile of noodles. On Android, this can lead to apps that leak the context, generate application not responding exceptions, or just plain buggy and a chore to work on. Instead, we are going to build an elegant layered cake. We are going to achieve this by following the best practices laid out on the Android development website. I encourage you to review their insightful documentation and to watch the great content they have made for developers just like you. We'll build on a classic robust foundation, the layered architecture. It is a proven approach for Android apps, ensuring that your geo-powered creations stay organized and scalable. The first layer is the UI layer. Closest to the user, this layer paints the picture. It is all about rendering your maps, handling user interactions, and providing a delightful experience. Think of it as the artist of your app, focused on looks, not logic. The key to a good presentation layer is to keep it lean. The presentation layer should not hold onto data or make complex decisions. That is a job for deeper layers. The data layer forms the foundation of your app. Unsurprisingly, this is where your data originates. That data can be fetched from the network, think Places API or geocoding. It can sync with local storage or even device sensors. It is your app's gateway to the real world. We recommend you organize your access into repositories. Each repository encapsulates a single data source, keeping things tidy and maintainable. Need Places data? Create a repository for that. User location? Another repository. Each repository may require multiple functions for reading and writing a variety of data, but should only access a single data source. Your data layer is the ultimate authority. Given the same data, your UI should always look the same. This makes your app more reliable and easier to test. At the heart of the application, the domain layer plays a pivotal role, serving as a bridge between the data layer and the user interface. It transforms raw data into states tailored to the UI layer. And here's where the user interactions are processed and converted into the form needed by the data layer. This is where your app's distinctive logic thrives, functioning as the brains of the entire operation. We also recommend use cases to break down complex tasks into focused operations. Does your app need to fetch place details and place photos? That's two separate use cases each interacting with the Places repository in its own way. All this layering may seem like extra work, but it is an investment that pays off. The benefits include separation of concerns. Each layer has its own clear responsibility. This means easier code to understand, modify, and debug. Testability. Isolate and test each layer independently, ensuring robust code. Scalability. Add new features or data sources without rewriting the entire app. Flexibility, swap out or update components with minimal impact. Readability, new developers can quickly grasp what your code structure. And lastly, make use of Kotlin coroutines and flows. These help make your app robust and responsive. And use dependency injection to decouple your app's components. Read all about these on the Android developer site. When building Google Maps platform apps, some patterns are pretty common. For example, you may need places data or to use the geocoder. These both translate to repositories, each with a number of use cases to simplify retrieving the data that you need. A location repository is another useful component. This can simplify getting locations and give you a convenient means to get mock locations. You may also need a repository to hold on to your application specific data. For example, the Google Map Compose Code Lab has a repository for getting the list of mountain peaks. The data returned from the APIs and SDK is likely a superset of what you need in your UI. Our recommendation is to create a data model that fits your UI 
and employ mappers in the domain layer to transform the raw model into your application-specific needs. Our final tip shows you how to send Google Map interactions to your domain layer. In this example, we want to know the bounds of the current map view. If we provide a function in our view model to track the current map projection, then we can invoke that function as the user pans around. We wait until the camera projection settles down before sending it back to the view model. In the view model, we can get the bounds of the current map view using the visible region of the current camera projection. Then we can update the model based on the camera location. For example, we may want to update the set of marker locations to retrieve from the server based on which markers are in the current view. A well-architected app is just like a well-oiled machine. It's smooth, efficient, and ready to tackle any challenge. So layer up your Google Maps apps and unlock their full potential. But you don't have to take my word for it. Check out the official app architecture guide on the Android developer's site. While you're there, take full advantage of all the excellent resources created by the Android team. And don't miss out on the Google Maps Platform's Android documentation and code labs linked in the description. Mm -hmm.